So I got a good question after lecture today, after we did the low pass filter derivation, where you have a sinusoidal voltage source connected to a resistor and a capacitor. And I kind of said, oh, this is just a voltage divider with impedances, so we can use our voltage divider equation. And the question was, well, hold on, how do you know it's a voltage divider? Or say you, you didn't remember voltage dividers, or if you didn't already know the voltage divider equation, how would you kind of do this from scratch? So I wanna work through that without jumping right to that voltage divider conclusion, given what we know. So here's our circuit. We have R, we have C. We know that the impedance of a resistor is R. We know that the impedance of a capacitor is one over J omega C. And we also know that the Equivalent impedance of two impedances in series. We kind of treat these like resistors. We add them in series and for impedances in parallel, they add inversely. And that is true for any combination of resistors, capacitors, or inductors. Okay, it doesn't matter what element each one of those individual impedances is you can mix and match them so you can add as we have in this circuit we have one resistor and one capacitor but we can still do this okay we have a resistor and a capacitor in series and we can add their impedances to get an equivalent impedance and finally i forgot to draw in the definition of impedance is the ratio of voltage to current okay so given all of this information that we have as background, how do we then find V out on that circuit, which I forgot to label, V out. How do we find V out as a function of Vs? So I'm going to redraw that circuit. There's Vs, I'm not gonna bother drawing the source symbol. There's Z1. Redraw this with impedances. And there's my V out. So as I said in the upper right there, I can combine that. It's one circuit where Vs is my input. I have a single equivalent impedance. Zq equals Zr plus Zc. Sorry, I should have labeled that Zr and Zc over here instead of Z1 and Z2. And using the definition of impedance, I can find the current through that circuit, just like you would with Ohm's law. So I have my definition of impedance up here. I'm going to use that down here. So my equivalent impedance, dr plus dc, is equal to vs over i. Now, just like I did when dealing with Resistor networks, if I expand this out again, back to my two original impedances, R, C, C, there's V out. These are in series, so I know the current through both of them still has to be I. So I, I can rearrange this equation to get Vs equals I times the R plus DC, or write that as I equals VS over ZR plus ZC. So I know that's my current through the entire thing, and it's the current through each one of these components individually because they're in series. I am interested in V out here, so to find that, I can just look at the voltage drop over the capacitor. And just using impedance for, sorry, the equation for impedance for the capacitor, I'm going to have Zc equals V out over I. I want to get V out as a function of Vs, so I can plug this expression I have for the current into there. Okay, so if I rearrange this to be V out equals Zc times I, 
I'm plugging the current expression in, that becomes ZC times ZR plus ZC BS. So there we go. That is my final equation. That, if you remember, does wind up looking exactly like our voltage divider equation. So we had Vn, that was inside over here, with two resistors, R1, R2, and there's V out. If we go through that exact same process, and there is a video on Canvas earlier that shows this derivation for just resistors, you basically do the exact same thing, but with R's instead of Z's in all of your equations. So you wind up with that final equation being V out equals R2 over R1 plus R2 V in. So the equation is the same form. We just have Z for impedance instead of R. And in this case, I use different subscripts C and R for the resistor and the capacitor instead of one and two. So hopefully that makes a little more sense. This is what I skipped over in class. We just kind of started with this equation and I said, oh, we can do this with impedances instead of with resistors. But what you'll see now is that the resistor K, the original voltage divider that we saw, is basically just a special case of the more generalized impedance case. So if I do this all with resistors and had Z1 and Z2 here, remember that the impedance of a resistor is just R, so if you plug in impedance for resistors into this equation, then you just get this same voltage divider equation that we had just for the resistors.